Welcome to Bedford High School, everybody. Uh, my name is Ken Harrington. For tonight's NHIAA Division I boys soccer game between the host Bedford Bulldogs and the visiting Spalding Red Raiders making their trip out 101 West from uh, Rochester, New Hampshire. Tonight's matchup, uh, as I said, is Bedford bringing in a record of five wins, four losses. They're on a, currently on a two-game losing streak, which is not very common around here, but the uh, two teams they lost to number two in the state Concord, and number one in the state Hanover this past week. So uh, we're looking for good things from Bedford tonight to come back with a W. Rochester, or Spalding out of Rochester, comes into tonight's game with a record of zero wins, nine losses, and one tie. That tie was against Dover the other night, uh, Tuesday night, but last night they suffered a five to nothing loss to Manchester Central. So hopefully things will look good for our Bulldogs tonight, and uh, we'll be back with the live action shortly. Welcome, welcome back to Bedford High School. I'm Ken Harrington. We're bringing you the play-by-play -play for tonight's Division I matchup, boys varsity soccer between the Bedford Bulldogs and the Spalding Red Raiders. As I said before, Bedford comes in with a record of 5-4. and four. Spalding comes in with a record of zero wins, nine losses, and one tie. Bedford currently sitting ninth in the Division I standings. Um, that is very important as... As of Tuesday, the uh, calendar flipped October, and most of you out there are eager to go leaf peeping or apple picking, but uh, these kids on the field tonight are thinking about playoffs, which will be happening uh, in the uh, end of October. As I said, Bedford currently in the ninth seed. They'd like to try to improve their record as much as they can, but most important is those top eight seeds uh, guarantees you at least one home game if you're the eighth seed, and um, although it's not as crucial as it is in professional sports with thousands of people. It is nice to have a home game, not have that long bus ride up to Hanover or wherever they may end up going. <clears throat> so uh, let's hope uh, Bedford, Bedford can get on a roll here. Teams are taking the field. Tonight's officials for the match are Peter Tangway and Jason Ayotte. We'll go two 40-minute halves, and hopefully that will be enough. We do need, uh, if we need, do need some extra time, there is a um, 10 minute golden goal, they call it. So that, uh, first goal, first team to score will finish the game, will end the game. Looks like Bedford will be kicking off. J Joshua Reeks getting the start and goal tonight for Bedford. I know the, I've seen uh, Nick Barnhart in there some, so either platooning them back and forth, rotating games, or uh, just just a uh, change of pace tonight. Spalding will be kicking off. And we're on their way. Heald looks to apply pressure. Bedford, or, uh, Spalding controls it, plays it back. Up the right side. Bedford regains control, that's Heald. Looking for an opening over to the left side. Ball played back. That's one of the best passes in soccer that you don't see a lot of teams use is the back pass. Sometimes it's easier to go backwards to uh, actually advance the ball. Have to play the, play the bounce on this artificial turf here. Spalding under control with the ball. Stolen pass stolen by Bedford up the left side. Out of bounds, goal kick, Spalding. Just underway here tonight in Bedford. Beautiful fall evening, a little rain earlier, but everything's cleared up. Big, big weekend in town, especially here at the high school. Homecoming week, events all week, big pep rally today. 
field hockey team suffering a tough loss earlier th this afternoon, three to nothing to win a Cunit. And here we are, boys soccer tonight. Captain Robert Fillin plays it up. Looks like a free kick for Bedford. Number five, Robert Flynn. He's the senior defender captain. He's going to play the short pass up to Brian Gould. Gould gets it to the outside to Briggs. Now played back to Gould. Played back to Flynn. Nice Chris short passing early from Bedford. Gould gets it up to Briggs. Looks to play it down the right side to number 20, La Rochelle. And the ball is out of bounds. Off from Bedford, goal kicks balling. It's important to win these what I call 50-50 balls off these goal kicks, off the uh, any direct kicks around the midfield. If Bedford can control the midfield, they're going to get plenty of opportunities to put the ball in the back of the net. Spalding looks to switch fields. Big bounce. Coolin's going to play it back to Leary. Leary with a short pass up to Kistis. Spalding looks to clear. Deflected out of bounds off from Bedford. Be Spalding throw in. Just underway here. Three minutes into the game. No score. Spalding looks to get the ball over midfield for the first time. Bedford totally controlling right now. That's Coolman. Looking to do something with it out to the outside to break or to kiss this, sorry. Out of bounds off Bedford. Spalding throw in. Nice head skip to Spalding. Played out of bounds by number four, Joshua Bauer. Spalding throw in. Spalding looks to attack. Deflected out by Flynn. Pass is stolen. I'd like to see a little harder pass there, but... Stolen back by Briggs. Plays up now. Briggs gets it back from La Rochelle. He's looking for space. He puts it down the flag. Trying to get an early cross. Deflected out of bounds. Corner kick for Bedford. I think people don't realize on this turf how fast that ball moves sometimes. Plus, it's a nice wide field, regulation field here. It looks like Kistis is going to take the corner kick. Left-footed kick. Well, well into the zone. Might have got away with a little bit of a handball. It looks like he turned his shoulder, but saved by the goalie for Spalding. Nice punt. Oh, I think we might. <laughs> they're going to play through that one. Spalding on the attack. Ball defended well by Bedford. Played back. Trying to clear it. Deflects off his own man. Ball comes wide to Gould. Played into the middle. And Flynn clears it wide. Nice hustle by number 20, Nicholas La Rochelle, but the ball was out of bounds. Spalding throw in. Gould heads it out of bounds, defended well by Bedford. Ball deflected, wasn't able to be controlled by Spalding. Out of bounds, off Bedford. Spalding on the attack here, just... Fairly early in the game. Six minutes gone in the first half. Nice throw in. Cleared out well by Kistis. Spalding wins the ball in the air. 
That's number 16 for Spalding. Reese Paquette. There we go. We're going to get a call for a foul after the kick. Kuhlman goes down. Direct kick for the Bulldogs. Sometimes they'll let those play through, but if there's control, if the, the team that is fouled, they'll have a play on, but no uh, no need for it there. Played short by Flynn to, to Gould. Deflected out of bounds. Bedford throw in. Gould's going to take the throw in. Played up to Briggs. Keeper comes out, makes the save. Spalding looks to clear their end of the field. Nice punt. Kuhlman trying to get something on it. Bounces past him. Spalding on the attack. We've got a man off sides right now, but it doesn't go through, so no call. Kuhlman likes to gain control. He has it. He's breaking up the left side. Got a man up in front. That was number 10, uh, James Heald. Heald had the game winner a week or so ago, a couple weeks ago, I guess now, against Merrimack in double overtime. And we're going to have a takedown on Spalding. Direct kick for Bedford. Scoreless game here early on. Just eight minutes in, Bedford Bulldog Stadium. Bedford and Spalding. Played short by Bauer. Up the left side, the Rochelle in the middle. Looking for some options. Plays back to number three, Jacob DeAngelis. <coughs> back to Flynn. Over to Bauer. Bedford switches fields. Good idea there. Just a uh, step behind was Bedford. Spalding on the attack. Gould with a nice stop, clears it with the left foot, switches fields. Kistis looks to go ahead to La Rochelle. Spalding trying to screen it, trying to get the throw in, and he had to play it out. Good play there by La Rochelle. Not letting them turn. Bedford throw in, quickly thrown in by Bedford. Heald's looking for some options. Plays it back to DeAngelis, to Gould. Back to Flynn. Spalding applying some light pressure. Good deflection by Kuhlman. Ball skips through. No opportunity there for Bedford. Out of bounds, Bulldog throw in. Coach Pepper apparently doesn't want uh, Briggs throwing it in. Politely yells across the field. Heald's going to throw it in. Nice throw in right in front of the goalie. Goalie comes out, punches it, and then is able to go gain control. It looks pretty obvious right now that uh, Spalding's opportunities to score are going to be off the goalie punt, maybe a fast break, try to get a quick counterattack. Something, uh, scoring something that's been an issue for Spalding this year. Only two goals in uh, 10 games. Part of the reason why they are winless. Ball turned over to Spalding. They look to play it through. Reeks will come out and get it. He's letting his teammates get formation. Big punt right around the half field line. Nobody's able to get much of a touch on it. Spalding controls. Stuart Pepper's got to be early, happy early with the pressure that his men are applying to his ball carriers, though. Played back to the keeper. Kicks it out, and it's going to stay in. Kistis, back to Kistis now <clears throat> from Leary. 
the Rochelle looking to play it. He's going to play the short game with, I believe that's healed. To Kuhlman, back to healed. Looking to switch fields now. Healed looking to attack. Good through ball. Just off step a little bit. Flynn's going to win that one. Then he loses it back to Spalding. Spalding looking to attack. Good pressure, though, by Bedford. Gould plays a short pass. Ball's cleared out of the zone. It's going to be played back to the keeper. New rule came in. I don't know. It's been a few years now, five years or so, but the only time the keeper can pick it up from his own teammate now is if, if it's off the head. It can't be directly played like right there. He's got to use his feet. Bedford Reeks clears it out of the zone. Two Briggs. Briggs back to Gould, back to Briggs. A little two-man game, loses it. No call there. Oh, they're going to try to let it play on, but then they did make the call. Foul there on DeAngelis. Spalding will have a free kick. About 35 yards out. Let's see what they do with it. Shot goes wide of the net. Goal kick, Bedford. Substitution's coming in. We'll try to get the call on Bedford. Looks like DeAngelis is going out. And looks like Drew Smith, Andrew Smith, the sophomore forward coming in. Ball played across the field. Now back by Bedford to Bauer. Try to go up to the left side. Lost Smith trying to gain position. Heald will get a shoulder on it. Played up ahead to La Rochelle. Him and Heald kind of run into each other. They got a two on one. Heald fires it over the top of the goal. Good opportunity there for Bedford. Twenty-five minutes, twenty-six minutes to go here in the. First half, still scoreless. The Spalding Red Raiders and the Bedford Bulldogs. Goal kick. Heald wins that one in the air. Plays it back into Bedford zone. Andrew Smith's going to play it out wide to Briggs. Back to Gould. Kuhlman's making a run to the middle. He tries to get it back up to Briggs. Can't control it. After the whistle, we're going to have Briggs with a foul. Spalding free kick. I like the aggression. I like the pressure, though, that Bedford's putting on so far. Bedford defense looks like they're trying to hold around the 15. Cleared out of the way by Heald. Spalding throw in. Reese Paquette with the throw in for the Red Raiders. Nice throw in. Tries to get it into the box. Skipped and out of bounds. Goal kick Bedford. Nice far throw in there. And it was J.P. Eaton with the header just wide of the goal. Reeks will put the ball down on the six yards. Six yard line. Six yard box. Spalding wins it but puts it into the Almost in the Bedford zone now. It's back, played back to Flynn. Flynn looks to clear and lead the Rochelle. Heald wins that one. The Rochelle looking at his options. Passes behind Smith. Gould will come up and keep it in the Bedford zone though. Kistis makes a move, tries to get a big cross. Goes across on the ground. Had a couple opportunities by Bedford. Played back to Gould. Gould's going to put it on goal. Deflected out by Spalding. Good pressure by Gould. He wins it. Plays it back to Heald. Back to Gould. Down to Briggs. Nice triangle set up by Bedford. Good short passes. Gould's looking to pass it in. Drew Smith gets a foot on it but can't control. Pops back out. Bauer plays it over to... 
Number 11, that's Joshua Leary. Good opportunity there. Nice save by Spalding Keeper. Nice shot on goal by La Rochelle. Spalding trying to switch fields off the goalie punt. It goes out of bounds. Bedford throwing. Like to thank the Bedford Athletic Bulldogs for ball boys tonight. I heard they're a really well coached team. <laughs> As that is my U9, U10 team. Sorry, they're nine years old. U10 team tonight. BAC is doing a great job this year supporting Bedford Athletic soccer teams and ball boys for both boys and girls. Gould and Flynn play the two-man game. Flynn looking at his options. He's going to switch fields. Kisses is trying to beat it out. A little bit of hands, but no call. Cross, Smith off the head. Goalie elects to save it instead of letting it go out. I think he's trying to get a quick counter. I think that's Spalding's best opportunity right now to get a goal is to try to counter quick when Bedford's pressuring. Heald plays it back to Flynn. They look to switch fields over to the left side. Leary looks to play it up. Can't be controlled out of bounds. Spalding throw in. Couple good opportunities for Bedford here so far in the first half as we approach the midway point. Still scoreless on homecoming weekend here at Bedford High School. This place will be packed tomorrow with the neighboring Goffstown Grizzlies coming in here for a two o'clock football game. The undefeated 4-0 Bedford Bulldog football team. As we said earlier, the uh, field hockey team put up a good fight against one of the best field hockey teams in the state. Win a kind of earlier today, losing 3 nothing. Bedford losing. Ball goes out of bounds. Spalding throw in. The girls are out in Rochester tonight. So we'll see if we can get a score on them before the end of the night. Spalding throws it in. Heald wins it. Looking to switch fields, plays it up to Smith, back to Heald. Plays it out to Briggs, deflected out of bounds. Bedford, Gould throws it in quickly to Briggs. Couldn't get ahead on that or anything on that one. Must have been a substitution I missed, apologize. Brett Squires now playing up front for the Bulldogs. Flynn looks to play back to Reeks, but decides to go over Switch fields. Leary plays it up to Kistis. Now that is Squires. Ball deflected out of bounds. Bedford throw in. I think we got an injured Red Raider. He was kneeling down. The ref stops play quickly and uh, We'll get a substitution here for Spalding. <clears throat> Bedford throw in. Squires looks to play it back to Heald. Coolman with it now. Fends off the bump from Spalding. Played back in by Leary. Headed out of bounds. Bedford corner kick. Briggs was right there, but he couldn't get any, anything good behind it. Kistis will take the corner from the right side, the left-footed Kistis, or he'll kick it left anyways. I'm sure he's very skilled both. Good opportunity right there in front. Actually hits off our own player, goes over the top. Gold kick, Bedford. Great opportunity there. It looked like number four. Joshua Byer maybe had a good shot at it. It looked like he hit Heald, who was laying on the ground at the time. But good pressure there by Bedford. Good opportunity. I spoke earlier about Spalding only having two goals all year. Although Bedford's five and four, they're winning their games one, two, nothing. I think three, nothing was the biggest win they had. So not a lot of goals like we've been used to over the last three years. But nonetheless, Stuart Pepper's got his guys playing really well 
that's when we want them playing now is into October playoffs, about two and a half, three weeks away now. As Squires loses control. Balding looked to attack, played up front. Flynn says, no, thank you. Politely puts it back in. Squires can't get anything on it, and it is kicked out of bounds off from Spalding. Bedford throw in. Played back to Bauer. He's going to play it back to Reeks, the keeper. Gould comes wide. Reeks looking at his options. Tries to get it to heal. Little grab there. No call. Bedford gets it back. Briggs looking for space, plays it back to Flynn. To Smith. Smith. Sorry, Briggs couldn't get that one off the Smith foot. Out of bounds, out of, to Spalding. Heald gains control again. He's going to play to the far side. To Leary. Leary's going to control it. Now gives it up to Kistis. Played back to Leary, but too hard. Bedford gets control now with Bauer coming over to help out. Out of bounds, Spalding ball. Bauer gets ahead on it. Leary in there to help on defense, and Flynn clears it out. It's a foot race to the ball. Nice hustle there by Briggs. He wins it. Smith now is going to play it back to Briggs. Bedford on the attack. Ball knocked away. Spalding clears it out of bounds. Throw in Bedford. I think uh, Mr. Briggs learned last time that he's not to take those throw ins, so he didn't even go over there this time. Nice throw in there by Heald. Heavy defense by Spalding. They clear it. Played back in by Flynn. Oof. Hard shot off the face. Ball played out of bounds. Bedford throw in. Throwing back to Flynn. He's going to control. Spalding wants a handball. No call. No intentional handball anyways. It might have rolled up his arm, but he wasn't using it to his advantage. Ball goes out of bounds to Spalding. Pretty good crowd here for Friday night. Rain held off. Rained earlier today, held off, and turned out to be another nice. We've had a great stretch of weather. Ball out of bounds, throw in to Spalding. Substitutions coming in for Spalding. Fifteen and a half minutes to go here in the first half. Still scoreless. Leary's going to play it up. Smith can't get anything on it. Good hustle by Squires. He gets a foot. He's got one man to beat. Goalie's out a little bit. Reeks, or sorry, Squires with a Shot that goes wide left, but good pressure once again by Bedford. Goalie was out a few steps, thought maybe if he had recognized it, maybe he could have tried to chip it up and over, but he elects to go on the ground and it was a good shot. Far post, just wide. Spalding goal kick. Kuhlman tries to win it. Gets a little bit of something on it. Healed. Plays it to Smith. Back to Kuhlman. Pass is stolen by Spalding. Spalding looks to attack. Ball is cleared by Bauer. Played back in by Spalding. They look to bring it up to the left side. Pass back. Nobody there. Squires looks to win it. He gets it. He works his way through two guys. And I think they're going to get Squires on the second time through with a slight hold. Spalding ball, free kick. Nice hustle there by Heal to win it in the air. Out of bounds, Spalding throw in.
Paul Kett seems to be the designated throw-in person for uh, Spalding. No matter where he's on the field, he's been going back and forth both sides of the field. Ball defended well by Bedford out of bounds. Throw in. Pawcat will take this one. No offsides on a throw in either. So you can, Spalding can push up as far as they want. Ball's thrown into the box. Cleared out by Bauer. Squires can't handle it. Plays it back to all the Kuhlman. Kuhlman leads it up to Heels. Out of bounds off Spalding. Gould looking for the quick throw in. Over the head of Briggs, but Heald gets it. Ball's played through. Nice cross over the top. Nice play there by Heald. I think that was Drew. Was that Drew Smith? Drew Smith, the young sophomore, had nothing but an orange net in front of him, puts it over the top. Once again, good pressure. Good pressure. Coach Pepper's got to be happy. You keep getting the pressure. They'll put one in the back of the net. I think there was going to be an offsides there on Squires, but he never factored into the play, so the ref let it go. If uh, if Heald had passed it to him, probably would have been an offsides. Throw in by Spalding. Spalding looks to put it through, and uh, looks like Bedford's going to let it ride out for a goal kick. Couple substitutions coming in. Drew Smith's going to go off. And I can't catch the one on the far side. I'll try to get the subs to you. I'm trying to see the number here. 16, Ag Alexander Pratt. Fresh into the game. We'll try to get the other one. I think he's on the far side of the field. Ball won back by Bedford. Turned over. Spalding looking to do something with it. Can't control it. That might be the new one there. No, that's Kuhlman. He's been in. Ball played forward to Bedford. Cleared. Down the right side. Bauer's going to Try to head it up to Kuhlman. Ball out of bounds off Bedford. Sorry, off from Spalding, Bedford throwing. Nice head by Squires, tries to get it to Heald. Stolen by Spalding. Spalding looks to bring it up. Nice shoulder to shoulder action there, Briggs. Nice through ball by Briggs. Out of bounds off Spalding. Gould looks to throw it in quickly. An inverting ball on the field. I teach him how to play soccer, not how to be ball boy, so I apologize for that. Played back to Flynn. Flynn back to Gould. Gould tries to send it through, defended well by Spalding. Flynn now tries to cross. Squires gets a touch on it. Spalding goalie is there. Ten minutes to play in the first half. Still scoreless. Bedford Bulldog Stadium. Bedford and Spalding. Kuhlman looks to win it in the air, but it goes over his head, but back and backed up by Kistis. Squires can't win it. He was offside. Yep. Good call there by the official. Joshua Bells, I believe, on the far side of the field. Number six. That might have been the other substitution. Indirect kick. As you can see, the official has his hands up. Obviously not going to happen from here, but an indirect kick, for you that don't know, is the ball has to be touched by someone else. Can't be kicked directly in the goal. As you see, as soon as it's touched, whether it's offense or defense, their hands drop. Bedford controls, healed. Looks to put it through to Squires. Spalding wants to play it back to the keeper, now decides to turn it out. Good decision there as Squires was applying pressure. Kistis puts it back in, nobody there. Spalding keeper will take it.
Good win by Gould to Heald. A little push in the back. They're going to play on. No loss of possession. Nice chip forward to Briggs. He's got to put that to six. Tough angle. Tough angle. Good shot. Good shot there, but a tough angle. But nobody was really on the far side to cross it to, so good decision. Spalding looks to counter quick. Ball goes through. Reeks will make the easy save. He'll let his middies get back to their position. Low kick, but one by Bedford. Heel deflects it up top. Squires trying to win the foot race. Misplayed back. Squires, nice play by the goalie. Nice play. Squires did, a, did the right thing there. The goalie did a nice job of coming out. And it was a great save. Two goalies uh, on the roster here. I think it's Hoyt that might be starting. We'll have to check on that. But nonetheless, a great save by Spalding. A few substitutions coming in now for both teams. Number 24 in the game now for Bedford. Aiden Skillings. He's a junior striker forward. Gould takes the throw in quickly to Heald. Plays it back to Gould. Back to Heald. Heald's going to play it back to Flynn. Flynn looks to switch fields. Going to play it back to Reeks, the keeper. And uh, Bedford will reshape. Played back to Heald. Little push in the back, and Heald helped as well by bending over, but he gets the call. That was a, the right call. Kuhlman plays it quickly across. Kistis in control. Bedford loses it, gets it back now. Kuhlman to Heald. Heald looks to push it to Briggs. No, he's going to keep it himself. Physical action, no call. Kuhlman thought he had it, stolen by Spalding. They look to get a break. Bowers back, and he intercepts the pass. Spalding controlled, now back to Heald. Heald gets the steal. He's looking to do something with it. Looks like it's back to, I believe that's Kistis. He loses it. Back to Heald. Flynn's going to take it. Look at his option. Play short to Gould. Back to Flynn. Flynn likes to play it through. Ball defended well by Spalding. And cleared. Flynn's going to play up to Briggs. Briggs plays back to Flynn. Bedford gets in there. Formation. Gould's going to play it up now. New into the game, as I said before, Skillings. With that possession, ball gets deflected out of bounds. Off Rochester, Bedford throw in. Five minutes to go in the first half, still scoreless. A couple more subs coming in for Bedford. Nice. Fall evening here, early October. Ball thrown in by Gould, Skillings, and Heald. Both going after it, deflected out of bounds. It's close to the corner, but it's a throw in on the sideline. Substitution now by Spalding will slow play down. As we said, a full weekend of athletics here Bedford Bulldog Stadium. All athletic teams doing doing well again this year. The school is only six years old. Kuhlman has it in control. Plays back to Kistis. He's going to keep it on the left side. Chips it up and over. Skillings is trying to win it in the corner. Defended by Spalding. Cleared out. Gould wins the ball there. Around midfield, he looks to play it up. 
Pushes it through to Smith. Smith back in the game. Drew Smith. I think we're going to get a little shove on Skillings after the uh, after the play there. Free kick for Spalding. Three and a half to go. Good pressure by Bedford, but no goals yet. Spalding wins that 50-50 ball. Flynn's there to clear it. Smith with a man on his back. Skilling's trying to win the foot race, and Spalding's going to clear it out. Actually, it's going to stay in. Good hustle by Kuhlman. Plays it up to La, La Rochelle. He's looking to bring it down the left side and see if he can get a foot on it. Defended well by Spalding. No place to go. Out of bounds. Goal kick, Spalding. Two and a half to play in the first half. Stick with us after the game. We'll have hopefully some post-game comments from Coach Stuart Pepper. Holly working hard down there on the field. Skillings looks to play it through to Smith. Now he looks to beat his man. He had a step. Defended well by Spalding. Throw in Bedford. Once again over on the left side now. Heald will take the throw in. Let's see if we can't get a white shirt with a head on this one. Two minutes to go. First half. Pushing. Nope. No pushing there. Keeper gets it. Looked like Skillings and the Spalding defender were locked in, locked arms. Good punt once again. Not sure who it skipped off, but Reeks will pick it up. And of course, what I was saying earlier with the rule of the goalie not being able to pick it up, that's only if it's intentionally played back. If it's a deflection or something, not meant to, they can they can certainly do it. But you don't want to take a chance sometimes with uh, with officials. Flynn plays it to Gould. Gould looks to play it up. Briggs lets it ride and goes to Skillings. He's trying to support him. Nice job across there by Skillings, but Spalding keeper is there. Kistis wins it with his foot. Kuhlman plays it out wide to La Rochelle. Back to Kistis. He looks to clear Smith. A little shove in the back. No call. Now they're going to call it. They delayed it to, for the play on. Bedford lost possession, so they do give them the free kick. Under two minutes, time official time is kept by the officials on the field, so the score clock here stops with two minutes to go, and the officials have it on the field. Important possession here for Bedford right before the half. Maybe we can get one in the back of the net. Kistis looks to take it. Cleared out. Good chance there for Heald. Can't quite control it. He's going to play back. Spalding looking to pull the defense up, trying to draw sides. Chipped up ahead. Kuhlman's there. Still with Skillings, but the keeper makes a nice save. Spalding looking to quickly counter off the goalie punt. Bauer up. Wins it. Nice flick pass through by Spalding. Nice hustle there by Drew Smith getting back. Didn't get anything on it, but he kind of shielded off to the defender. Skillings plays it back. La Rochelle looks to push it through to Skillings. It's going to roll out of bounds. Goal kick. Spalding. And that will do it for the first half. So we've played 40 minutes here at Bedford High School and decided nothing. 0-0 zero, zero at the half. We'll be back with some halftime comments shortly. You're watching Bedford High School Soccer. Welcome back to Bedford High School. I'm Ken Harrington. Uh, today's Tonight's game between Bedford and Spalding, we're at halftime. Scoreless, 0-0. Zero, zero. We've played 40 minutes. I think uh, Bedford's definitely controlled most of the game. Um, we don't have official stats up here. I don't think Spalding's had a, a real shot on goal. It's been played back and played through a couple times to, uh, to Reeks, but no... No opportunity. A couple good opportunities there for Bedford. One early, about midway through the half, on a corner kick. The ball was uh, a good opportunity 
and it was hit into a Bedford zone player, so no, uh, no scoring there. We'll look to see, as I said earlier, Bedford, you know, five wins, four losses, but they haven't really scored a lot this year. I think they've scored nine goals in their in their wins or in their games total. They did score uh, one goal against Concord, four one loss. Spalding with only two. But, you know, this is why if you look at it on paper, you would think Bedford would be a team that would win this game and be in control, which they have totally been in control, but uh, still 0-0 zero, zero here at halftime. So I think Coach Pepper overall has got to be pretty pleased with the the pressure they're putting on and the way they're controlling the midfield. Uh, I think if they keep applying the pressure here in the second half, their opportunities will come. Welcome back to Bedford High School. We're here at halftime of the uh, tonight's soccer game between the Bedford Bulldogs and Spalding Red Raiders. I'm joined in the booth now by Holly Stanhope. Holly, welcome. Hi, I'm new to Bedford, everyone. I'm from a small town in Maine called Princeton, born and raised. Uh, college, I went to the University of Maine, studied journalism. I just graduated last May. I'm working for a PR firm in Manchester. Hooked up with Mike here in Castle Hill Media, and I'm excited to get back into sports broadcasting, and I'm happy to be in Bedford. Well, as I said before, welcome. Uh, must be a Black Bear fan, obviously. Of course, you've got to be. I know our hockey team was very disappointing last year, but with a new coach, we're hoping we can turn things around and get the ball back rolling. All right, well, welcome once again. We look forward to working with you. Thank you. Welcome back to Bedford High School. As we get back to start the second half of tonight's Division I boys soccer game between Bedford and Spalding. We're scoreless after 40 minutes in a half that was pretty much dominated by Bedford. Some good opportunities, two or three real good opportunities for Bedford, but no goals as of yet. So in what has been deemed a rebuilding year for Coach Stuart Pepper. I think it was uh, somewhere was around 15 seniors that graduated last year. 2010, they were Division II runner-up, losing to Hanover 2-1. to one. Division, or 2011, winning Division II with a one nothing win over Lebanon. And then last year, moving up to Division One, they lost in the semifinals to Central, Manchester Central. Back under Way here, Heald wins the ball for Bedford, looks to play through. Big cross, deflected out of bounds, corner kick for Bedford. So let's see if they can't get something going here early in the second half. Kistis will take the corner. Bedford getting their formation starting wide, then working their way in. Smith had an opportunity. Just over his head, and a quick counter again by Spalding. Spalding has the right idea, I think, by trying to counter with a goalie his big kicks, but most of their guys are back on the defensive side, so nobody's really up there to get it. Heald plays it out wide to Gould. Flynn puts it back in. Ball up in the air. Who's going to win it? It will be Gould for Bedford. Off from Heald's head. Spalding controls. Healed again. Back up. Squire's getting a start here in the second half. See if he can gain control. He can't. Out of bounds. Spalding throw in. Quick substitution already for Spalding. Spalding can't control the throw-in, out of bounds. Bedford throw-in. Gould will take it. Squires looks at control, plays back to Gould. Gould back to Squires. Squires looks to put it down to the flag. Nice through ball. Soft cross. Smith can't control. He gets a left foot on it now. Ball goes out of bounds. Did the goalie touch that? It looked like he touched it, but maybe it was already out. Goal kick, Spalding. So again, starting right off the second half, some good opportunities for Bedford. Off the Spalding goal kick. Spalding will win it. Heald now jumps in front, gets a touch. Squires puts it out wide to Briggs. Briggs can't control. Turn back over. Now they're going to... Might have got Briggs with a foul. 
Spalding free kick. Bedford defense looks to hold. Hit the 20. Kistis plays it out. Smith can't control. Now Coolin sends it wide. Kistis gets a foot on it. Missed kick by Spalding. Squire's got an opportunity. Spalding gets back, defends well, kicks it out of bounds. Throw in deep in the zone for Bedford. And again, Kistis looks to take it, but now Heald says thank you very much. Official tells him to move down a little deeper if he wants. Sometimes they just don't get the exact spot because they're looking for the quick counter. Nice throw in, good opportunity. Off squares, I'm not sure if he missed it or if it was just a soft touch. Easy save for the goalie. Gould looks to throw it back to Flynn. Flynn takes his time, plays short to Gould. Gould plays it up the line. Briggs can't control. Squires is there. Out of bounds, to bed for throw-in. No offside on the throw-in. Squires, good hustle, but can't quite get it. No angle there. Goal kick, Spalding. I hope I didn't jinx us. We were talking about overtime earlier <laughs> in the pregame, and we don't want to see one of those golden goal opportunities. That's the one thing I, I say about soccer. Usually a lot of sports, the better team usually will win, even if they play bad soccer. There's so many weird bounces, you never know. Squires loses control. Now Smith picks it up. He plays back to Coolin. Coolin with a missed kick to Spalding. Spalding looks to bring it up. Coolin with the steal. Coolin got a little away with a little obstruction there. No calls. A little sloppy play, but now Bedford takes control. Played wide to Kistis. He looks to go by his man. Out of bounds. Spalding throw in. Coolin looks to cross. Puts it into the Spalding defender. Now Bauer looks to clear it. He finds Squires in the middle. Can't control. Heald will clear or pick up the ball now and Put it down the line. Nice defense by Spalding. Squires, a great hustler. Sorry. Healed with great hustle to win it. And we're going to get a tripping foul on Spalding. Good opportunity here. Direct kick. Right about 25 yards out. Actually, they move it to 25, so now it'll be 30 yards out. Soccer, soccer field, 110 yards long. Let's see who's going to take it. Tried a little fake play there. Nice opportunity. Goalie got a piece of it, so it's going to be a corner kick. So Heald went like he was going to kick it. He kind of slid over the ball, jumped over the ball, not touching it. Kistis pushes through to him. Kistis won the corner kick. Won by the Spalding keeper. Balding keeper has definitely done a good job tonight. He's an aggressive keeper. He likes to come out a lot. Brian Gould now looks to throw it in for Bedford. Finds Drew Smith. Can't control out of bounds. Spalding throw in. Spalding trying to control. A little one-on-one -on -one game going on there with Briggs. Well defended by Briggs. Spalding loses it. Substitution coming in now. Drew Smith's going to go out. And it looks like we're going to get number 16, Alexander Pratt, into the game for the Bulldogs. Cooling controls in the middle. Plays back now to Gould. Gould to Flynn. Flynn looks to play back to Reeks, the keeper. <laughs> I think it caught him by guard, off guard a little. Spalding puts the pressure, but cleared away easily. Tripping foul on Spalding. 
Bedford looks to play quickly, but now it looks like they'll set it. Nope, now Flynn's going to try to get a through ball. Squires in a foot race. Out of bounds off Spalding. Heald will take it for the Bulldogs. Off the Spalding head, back to Heald, makes a move, looks to cross, left foot across, nice soft cross at the, about the seven yard line. Played out now by Spalding. Briggs will win it, looking to do something. Off Spalding. Gould will come up to take the throw in for Bedford. No, he won't. It'll be a quick throw in from Briggs back to Gould. Puts the play to Kuhlman, but it was stolen by. Now Flynn heads, heads it back in. Healed, looking to do something with it. Looks to bring it to the corners to try to cross it back. Nice opportunity. In the, oh, over the top. I thought we had it. Nice play by Healed. He looked like he was kind of cornering himself over on that right side. And a big cross, and that was Pratt, who just came into the game recently with a foot on it just over the crossbar. Spalding will take the goal kick. Almost 10 minutes gone in the second half. Still scoreless. Bedford 0, Spalding 0. Spalding actually won the ball, but the ball is played back into the Bedford zone. Coleman will control. Plays it back to Heald. After a little work, he gets it. Trying to fend off the defender. Spalding will steal. Take it back. Spalding on the attack now. Defended by Flynn. Ball played down in the corner. And kicked out of bounds by Joshua Leary. Spalding throw in. We'll get another substitution for Spalding. So as I said at halftime, start of the second half, Stuart Pepper in a little bit of a rebuilding year, but he's got a lot coming, I can tell you. JV program as well. The middle school program is doing well. The Lurgio Lions 8-0 after a 10-0 thrashing of Woodbury of Salem yesterday. Nice hustle there by Kistis, but he couldn't save it out of bounds. <clears throat> Spalding throw in. It's played up ahead. Squires with good pressure. He's coming hard. Great hustle by Squires. Nope, they're going to get a push in the back on Leary. Spalding free kick. So much like the first half, some good opportunities for Bedford. Just can't find the back of the net right now. Of course, you had to feel that a uh, scoring could be a little bit of an issue this year when you lose a player like Eric Martell. Ball played well, deep into the zone. Reeks. With the save, maybe offsides. I'm not sure what the call was. And didn't seem to be much of any interference with the goalie, but yeah, it's indirect. Offsides. Bedford plays it out. Squires with a touch through. Here's an opportunity. Lost control, though, was Briggs. Corner kick, Bedford. Squires will get a rest. Well-deserved rest. Great hustle out there. By the junior. And into the game. The Rochelle looks like Nick is back in the game now. Kistis, nice punch out by the goalie. They're going to get breaks for a push in the back on the keeper. So free kick for Spalding. I don't even think I remember Spalding having a corner kick yet. <laughs> I don't think they've been down there long enough to have a go out of bounds. So the keeper for... Spalding will set up for the free kick. 
Ball won by Spaulding. They look to play it through on the right side. The speedy wing player for Spaulding. Well defended there by Leary. Ball out of bounds. Goal kick for Bedford. More substitutions coming in for Spaulding. And Reeks will take the goal kick for Bedford. Ball skips through. Now it's played by Pratt. He played it back to Kistis. Here comes La Rochelle. Left footed cross. A little too deep for Briggs. Now Pratt with a nice shot. And a save by the goalie from Spalding. Good opportunity again for Bedford. Briggs was pinched in a little too far, had to run backwards on the cross. If he was a little bit wider, it would have been easier for him to run in, but nonetheless, great opportunity. Kist is trying to play the ball, is tripped. Be a free kick for Bedford. The senior captain, Robert Flynn, will take the kick. Played low. Bedford throw in. Kistis will take the throw in. He's trying to find Heald. Headed over, a little confusion there. Nice left footed kick. Just wide by Briggs. So again, another opportunity for Bedford. I guess the good thing Bedford has going for them, it only takes one, as long as their defense can can hold true. 25 minutes to go. Second half, we're still scoreless. Ball played up through to La Rochelle. Nice slide. Out of bounds. Off from Spalding. Spalding player wanted a deflection from Bedford, but the official says no thank you. Kistis will take the throw in. Kista throws it into the middle of the box. Good aggressive play by the keeper, but I th think it was actually headed by a defender. Ball comes back out, cool and left-footed. Right, deflected through, and a, another opportunity for Pratt, but the keeper is there for Spaulding. Ball skips past Gould, and Flynn's there to back him up. Flynn puts it back in off the Spaulding head. Coolman coming hard, applying pressure. Misplayed by Spaulding. Kistis in an arm battle with the Spaulding defender. Out of bounds, Spaulding ball. Good play there. If you good keeper comes out. Ooh. Good pressure there by La Rochelle. A little bit of the keeper, but they were both jumping for the ball. No harm, no foul. Good sportsmanship there by La Rochelle, patting him on the back, saying, sorry about that. Over Flynn's head was the goalie kick, goal kick. Actually, keeper's punt, I should say. Ball's played out of bounds now. Off from Bedford, Spalding throw in. Gould with it. Looks to play it up. One back by Spaulding. They are going to call that one on the delay. The difference between that one and the one on this side the fans wanted was his hand was out. If they're down at your side, they're not going to call it most likely. It's incidental contact. That one there, the arm was out to the side. They got a free kick for Spaulding. Puts it on goal, well over the top, off the football crossbar, goal kick Bedford. So I guess if you look at it, plenty of opportunities for Bedford, good pressure. You're playing a team that's only put two goals in the 
in the net in two in uh, ten games. Here's an opportunity. La Rochelle plays it off his head. Goalie's out. If he can see if he can get a chip. Nope. Good cross. Who's there? A couple defenders. Oh. Tough play there by Spalding, putting it back in front of his own goalie. I'm sure Spalding coach wasn't happy about that one. All you young viewers out there watching, you never, never, never want to clear it back in front of your own goal. If anything, just put it over the end line, give them a corner, which they ended up with, but don't put it across the goal. Kistis with the left-footed corner again. Well-placed ball. Briggs with a head, just wide left. I guess the only thing that I can say, though, about Bedford is this is why they play these games on the field, not on paper. <laughs> you never know. Goal kick now for Spalding, approaching the 20-minute mark. Almost halfway through the second half. 0-0 zero, zero still. In a game totally dominated by Bedford. Very few chances for Spalding around the net. Heald puts it through. Quick ball pass in the middle to Rochelle. Loses control. Not sure who is deflected out of. It's going to be a throw in. And the refs are just guessing. Oh, we'll just throw it this way. <laughs> Tough one there because it was deflected. A couple players right there. Thrown in quickly by Spalding. Kistis puts it up. La Rochelle's trying to get something on it. Other than the Spalding guy on his back, which he does get. Looks like it's going to be a free kick. Heald will take it. He'll let his teammates get set up on the far side. He'd like to see this one go for that far post. See if we can get ahead on it here for Bedford. Beautiful ball. Gets through. Actually, handball, I believe. Handball, yes. Yep, correct call. Tough break, but correct call. Went off the head of one player from Bedford, deflected into the hand of a Bedford player into the goal. So the correct call was made, unfortunately for Bedford. And it'll be a free kick for Spalding. Heald's been all over the field. He's controlled the middle tonight. Plays it to Kuhlman. The Rochelle can't get a foot on it. It slides through to the Spalding keeper. Another good punt from Spalding. Kuhlman can't get ahead on it. Bowers there to back him up. Ball played through. Spalding saves it in, keeps it in. Ball's won back by Bedford. La Rochelle's going to play it. To the right side to Briggs. Briggs with a cross. Nobody there but a defender. Oh. Over the crossbar. Off the Spalding defender. Which was from the cross from Briggs on the right side. Another kick. Yet another corner kick for Bedford. So let's see if somebody can get ahead or a foot on this corner from Michael Kistis. He's been putting some pretty balls in there, but nobody can get it in the net except for a handball. This one goes too deep over. Breaks with a good with a good chance, just too high. Spalding throw in. I missed it. Hopefully it was a substitution because I hope Paquette's not coming from the other side of the field to throw this one in. Although I think he is their designated throw in. Ball won by Kist as he heads it back in. Here's a chance for La Rochelle. Pratt's trying to get to the middle. He brings it back to the right foot, plays it back to Cool, and let's see a shot there. There it is. Good opportunity. Deflected out by the defender. Right idea by Coolman. Just couldn't get it through. Ball played back from Briggs, back to Gould. Gould kind of just chips it up into the middle. Healed with it. He skips around one guy, tries to fire it. Goes wide right. I think it was deflected. Should be another corner. Yes, that is the call. 
I think the goalie is a little disappointed in himself. He didn't realize it was deflected. He was he would have saved it if he had known that. So again, Kistis, who's only a sophomore and defender, but they bring him up for these corner kicks. He's had really nice placement. Bedford breaks their formation. Nice ball again. Goalie barely gets a punch on it. Out of bounds, and we'll bring it over to the other side now, to the near side. And it looks like Heald will take it from over here. Approaching 16 and a half minutes to go in the second half. Let's see what Heald will do with it. Another nice ball right there, though, is the Spalding keeper. Nice punt, one by Bedford, but it goes back. Flynn deflects into his hand off from Bauer's head. It'll be a free kick for Spalding. These are the ones that make you nervous, though, if you're Coach Pepper. You've dominated the game, and a free kick, relatively close for Spalding. He chips it up over the head. There's a man broke free. Off the crossbar, then in. Spalding leads at one nothing. Number 19 for Spalding. As you see, we take another look at it. Went off the Spalding player, off the crossbar, into a Bedford player and into the goal. So Spalding leads it one nothing with 15.52 left to play in the game. Bedford controls off the kick kickoff. Ball played out of bounds. Spalding throw in. So Martinez with the goal for Spalding gets credit with the goal. So with 15 minutes to go, let's see if Bever can get one, get the equalizer. Here comes Gould trying to play up the right side. Substitution coming back in, Squires. Squares looks like he's going to replace Leary. Misplayed by Spalding. Ball goes out of bounds. Throw in for Bedford. Heald looks to throw it in quick. Pratt there. Pratt with a head on it, but the goalie is right there for Spalding. Another good punt. Gould comes up to win it over his head. Now Gould does get control. Nice slide tackle by Spalding. I thought it was nice. They called a foul. Not sure. Thought he had ball, but Flynn looks to play it quickly. Gets it up to Squire. And La Rochelle can't control. Nice through ball. It's a foot race. Reeks is going to come out and clear it out. The Rochelle tries to play it back to Kistis. Goes out of bounds. Spalding throw in. So like I said, soccer, a game of funny bounces. Bedford's dominated the whole game. Very few shots from Spalding, and, uh, but they did convert on one of them. That one's played wide right to the goal. Goal kick for Bedford. Approaching the 13-minute mark. Brett Bedford will start to press a little bit. Pratt can't control. Good pressure, though. Heald wins it. Plays it out wide to Briggs. 
Didn't see the call, but it's going Bedford's way. Free kick. Plays it short to Gould. Gould's looking to play it back to Flynn. Well defended. He comes across the field to Bauer. Bauer plays it out to Kistis. Tries to push it down the wing to LaRochelle. Defended, but now he wins it back. Good cross there. Squires tries to get a foot on it. Runs through it. Nice shot. Goes wide. Good work by Squires to get a shot off. But it goes wide. Another Spalding goal kick. And I got a feeling that the more goal kicks they take, the slower they're going to move. It's always the unofficial controversy of soccer. When you're ahead, time's running low. Frequent substitutions and used to be throwing the ball out of bounds on a throw-in. If you threw it out of bounds, you got another chance. They changed that, I believe, now. Because we used to throw it out of bounds all the time just to do a re-throw. And here comes the Rochelle. Tries to get it past. It looks like it's deflected off Spalding. Yet another corner kick for Bedford. We don't have official stats, but I would say we're approaching at least... 12 to 15 corner kicks for Bedford. So let's see what Heald can do with this one. Puts it in front. Goalie makes a good save. Pratt looked like he had a chance to get ahead on it. Goalie came from behind. This one's going to go across the field. Goal kick for Spalding. Again, we'd like to thank the Bedford Athletic Club Bulldogs Travel Soccer Program for once again, as they have all year for boys and girls, supplying ball boys for tonight's game. Goal kicks won by Bedford. Nice by Kistis. Squires can't get a control. Now it's Kuhlman. He can't keep it in front, though, and it's played back to Gould. Gould. Sends it back in. Heald's trying, heads it out to Pratt. Pratt does a nice job to save it. Goalie's coming out and he'll get the save. So as we approach the 10 minute mark, one nothing Spalding on one of only maybe three shots they've had on goal all night. Off a free kick, off of a very tough handball, really. The ball was, a, was kind of a funny bounce. Hit off Flynn's hand. Squires is going to get a break, and they're going to come back in with Aiden Skillings, the junior forward, trying to keep some fresh legs up front for a sprint here at the end. Heald will control. He looks to use his speed. Loses it now back to Spalding. Reeks comes out, makes the save off a high, I guess, fly ball. I tr try not to bring baseball into soccer, but that's basically what it looked like. No call there on the Spalding player falling down. Heald applies pressure. Ball plays through to, to Reeks. <clears throat> Reeks plays it out quickly to Bauer. Now he finds Kuhlman in the middle. He had Kisses open, but it was mis a misdirected pass. Now Heald gets it back for Bedford. He plays back to Gould. Gould tries to make a move. Wards off the defender. Puts it through now to La Rochelle. Gets a slight touch on it. Out of bounds off from Spalding. 8.48 to play. Bedford needs to get the equalizer. Again out of bounds. Bedford throw in. I believe that's Briggs on the far side. Skillings controls, loses it. It's deflected off Spalding, though. Another corner kick for Bedford. Kisses will come up from his defensive spot to take it. Pratt's right in front of the goalie. The rest of the Bulldogs are taking formation. You'll see them make a cut to the goal. Here we go. Pratt deflects it off the goalie. Goalie's trying to find it, can't get a handle. Cleared away. Gould heads it back out 
to kiss this, who puts a cross in it. Here comes Pratt with an opportunity. And again, another corner. No, they're going to call foul on Bedford. It's going out. So it looked like it was going to be a corner kick for the Bulldogs. But they get Pratt for a push from behind, and it's a free kick for Spalding. Once again, one nothing. Red Raiders looking for their first win on the 2013 season. Bedford losers of two straight, but they lost to, to Concord and to uh, Hanover, the two top teams in the state. Kistis gets control now from Bauer. Plays it up to La Rochelle. Can't keep it close to him, though, and loses it. Nice head back in by Bauer. Kuhlman. Can't get there. Flynn comes up. Now he decides to play control defense. One by Heald. Back to Flynn. Uh, back to Flynn, who tries to put it up to Skillings. Defended by Spalding. Now it's Heald playing it out to Gould. Gould looks for some options. Gets it to Skillings in the middle. Can't control it. Played back out. Spalding. Looking to just play control. Puts it through. Reeks gets it. 6.30 to go. Low pump by Reeks, but it gets through. Kuhlman now. Bauer applying pressure. Little shoulder to shoulder. Gets the second one, though. Extends the arm. They're going to call it every time. Another free kick, about the same spot as, as the last goal. Spalding will definitely take their time here. Pretend they're setting something up, just trying to let that clock tick as we hit six minutes. Nice play by Reeks as he comes out, punches it away. Bedford looks to counter. Healed with good control. Skillings has got to watch his offsides. Ball's played back. He's back on now. Bedford can't control. Out of bounds off Spalding. That was Pratt. Throw in for Bedford. Some fresh legs coming in. Looks like Drew Smith is coming in for Skillings. And number 13 into the ball game now for Bedford. Cale Thompson replaces Kuhlman. Five minutes to go. Bedford throw in for Kistis. Nice throw in. Goalie decides to stay in this time. Unlike most of them, he's come out, and he does get this save, though. He's been real aggressive at coming out on corners and throw-ins. This one, he sits back, but it is headed right to him. Another good punt. He's really played a well, a really good game tonight for the, uh, for Spalding had some tough saves early. Kisses controls it, tries to switch fields, but it's played up through. Foot race for Drew Smith. He gets the touch on it, but the goalie's right there. Nice hustle by Smith, though. Spalding goalie punts it out. Flynn can't can't control it. Gould is there. Heel tries to head it up to Smith. Spalding defends. Flynn tries to win it. Flynn plays it up, but nobody's there from Bedford, and the goalie from Spalding will take it. Just under four minutes now. One nothing Spalding. One of only three goals this year in this game on a free kick. Penalty there. Bedford looks to counter quickly. Flynn will take it. Three and a half. We'll see now. Bedford pushes a couple of extra defenders up. Nice ball through La Rochelle. Nice left, but he couldn't get anything on it. Used the outside of his left foot, but just not enough power.
Bedford looks to gain control. Bauer to Kistis. Kistis looks to switch fields. Pratt's there, but can't get it. The Rochelle coming out. Can't get a touch on it. Number 13 into the ball game for Bedford. Kale Thompson, as I said, there's the goalie again for Spalding. Nice, quickly releases this one. Spalding looking for their first win. Bedford five and four. Trying to stay in that top, they're actually ninth right now, but trying to stay in that top eight. 16 teams make the playoffs. Eight or higher will at least get one home game. Right now that's where Bedford's right in the mix. They go to Londonderry, or they play Londonderry on Tuesday. Not sure if it's home or away. Reeks makes the save. They'll be at Londonderry on Tuesday. Two minutes, two minutes on the clock. The official time on the field. Smith's trying to get a touch. Can't win the foot race. Spalding gets it. Spalding just looking to put the ball in space now. Eat that clock up. Out of bounds off Bedford. Spalding throw in. Ball played off the Spalding back. Cool there applying the pressure. Take down by Spalding. Quickly played by Bedford. Free kick. Flynn's going to try to get it up through. Thompson with the head out of a Rochelle. A little bit of hands on the back, no call. Out of bounds off Spalding. Quick throw in now. Kisses looks for a ball. Now we got two of them on the field. We'll have to talk about that at practice this week. <laughs> we haven't worked on being ball boys. We're still working on skills. Pratt can't control. Played out. Gould's trying to win it. He puts it back in. Ball goes through to the keeper. So we're... Under the two minute mark, the officials got the clock, the official time on his watch. Misplayed by Thompson. Spalding really not looking to score, they're just looking to put it in space and they're hoping for those three whistles. Substitutions now for Bedford. On the far side, can't quite see. It looks like number three in the game for Bedford. Yep, Jacob DeAngelis. He throws it in quickly. Tries to get it to Squires. Squires trying to do something with it now. Defended well. They're going to get Squires for a, a hold. Ball's coming out for Spalding. Free kick. It's got to be under a minute now. There it is. So the Spalding Red Raiders come into Bedford. Get their first win of the season. one nothing on a game that was totally dominated by the Bedford Bulldogs. Plenty of corner kicks, plenty of opportunities. Just couldn't get the back of the net. And it was kind of a fluke goal for Bedford. And we'll be back to wrap things up after this timeout. Let's go down to the field now with Holly and some comments from Coach Stuart Pepper. So we're going to keep this short and sweet. I know you are, probably want to get home. So just tell us a little bit about what happened tonight. I just think we came across, you know, an outstanding goalkeeper who was just like the, the, the best keeper we played all season. We had uh, plenty of opportunities, you know, and in a way, although this team was the bottom team, I thought they were, you know, they were half decent. And really, you know, we, we played, you know, pretty well. You know, we created, you know, plenty of chances. The keeper made, you know, 12 or 13 saves and uh, we just didn't have the run of the, you know, the, the, the game. And they have one shot and they score, you know, we have a bit of misfortune. So sometimes that happens in soccer and we have just to get our heads up and just understand that. Now we're a young team. We have two uh, varsity players from last year. The rest are new players to this program. And uh, and games like this, we just have to learn, you know, because you know we're going to learn all the time. And this is this will probably be better for us in the long run in terms of you know learning from you know what we have to do to win soccer games at a high school level. Okay. So if you were to play these guys again, what would you do differently to prepare them? Uh, 
I don't know, you know, just just hopefully, you know, be a bit more clinical, you know, in the, in the final third, you know, and uh, if we you know, put our chances away, if maybe we make better runs and better and uh, have the better deliveries from our from our many corners we have, that could that could have been different. But at the same time, I, I I'm not questioning the boys' attitude and commitment and the, the way we played. I thought we we for the team of this experience, I thought we did all right, you know, and I, you know, I've told the lads that as well. We're not we're not down. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Have a good rest of the season. Thank you. Back here at Bedford Bulldogs Stadium, a tough game tonight for the homestanding Bulldogs. A 1-0 loss to the hands of the Spalding Red Raiders. Um, the goal scored by Gonzalez Martinez at the 24-58 mark of the second half. It was a direct kick, free kick after a handball by Bedford. Uh, the ball was played up. Martinez got a head ball on it. It hit off the crossbar, came down, hit a Bedford defender. Nothing Reeks could do. Josh Reeks, the goalie for Bedford, nothing he could do about it. And uh, a tough, tough game here for Coach Stuart Bedford and his Bulldog team. They will have to regroup as they head down to Londonderry to play the Lancers next week. It doesn't get any easier. They have Londonderry, they have Pinkerton, they have Manchester Central. Some tough games coming up here for Bedford as they look to improve their seating here for the playoffs at the end of the month. So we thank you once again for joining us tonight. We hope to bring you more Bedford High School soccer, both boys and girls. And uh, thanks for joining us. I'm Ken Harrington. We'll see you next time.